Laura Ingram did the shittiest segment about marijuana I've ever seen, and um, I want you to suffer through it like I did. I thought legalizing marijuana was supposed to take organized crime out of the pot business. Newsflash, it is not. Well, a startling report from NBC News this morning reveals that foreign cartels embrace homegrown marijuana in pot legal states. The reason is simple. According to Colorado Sheriff Bill Elder, they have found that it's easier to grow and process marijuana in Colorado than ship it throughout the United States than it is to bring it in from, let's say, Mexico or Cuba. Federal officials say that Chinese, Cuban, and Mexican drug rings have purchased or rented hundreds of homes in California, Colorado, and Washington, where lax pot laws provide cover for cartels. So is it time to admit that legalized pot in the whole experiment has failed? Here to debate that question is Mason Vert, who's a spokesman at the Marijuana Policy Project, joining us from Denver. Mason, it's great to see you. Um, this is pretty wild Thank that you. we have Chinese, Cuban, and Mexican mafia slash cartel uh, folks renting properties in Colorado and California to get their product well, out. How, how, how is this good for the states where pot was legalized? Well, this is actually something that's been going on in every state around the country for decades. And now in states like Colorado and Washington and California, what we're seeing is that the demand amongst the population in those states is being met by a new legal market where uh, the product is being controlled, it's being grown and sold by licensed businesses. And because there's still that demand in these other states that are not controlling marijuana, People are still producing oh, it and on, then come sending on, come it on. out Mason, there. Mason, Mason, Mason. They're able to undercut the expensive. I've, 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 I've browsed in some of those stores in Colorado, the infused, lavender-infused edibles. All this, stuff. this stuff's expensive. The cartels can come in, well, rent these places, undercut the legal pot, and it's and sometimes a lot more potent, believe it or not, and a lot more dangerous. And they flood the market with that, undercutting legal pot, uh, not, I, not I, causing I it to be a problem. I don't know where you're shopping for marijuana, but if you've I'm ever not, been to a marijuana much, store in Colorado, well, you well are but you're talking about the prices, and the fact is that you can buy marijuana for the same or lower uh, of a rate than you could on the street. No one is going out and calling around to illegal drug dealers or trying yeah. to meet on the street corner. I mean, imagine if alcohol right, let's, was let's being give, sold uh, illegally. Okay. I mean, yeah, all right, I get your point. All right, let's hear what Colorado law enforcement, who are actually on the front lines here, what they're saying about this wonderful legalization experiment. The vast majority of people that we that we come across at these grows are, are Cuban nationals. They're organized drug trafficking organizations who come to Colorado to grow their marijuana. Colombia is to cocaine as Colorado is to marijuana. And do you think that the state is turning a blind eye to this? I think they are absolutely turning a blind eye. To this experiment has failed. And I urge any, any state that is thinking about legalizing marijuana to learn by our mistakes. Don't let this happen in other states. Final thought from you very quickly. Uh, well, there's a reason why Mexican cartels and Chinese drug rings are not renting out houses in the suburbs to distill whiskey and bootleg it around the country. Right. It's because it's a regulated yeah, okay. product. That's why Donald Trump supports letting states establish their own policies and is working with Congress uh, to pass a All law right, to do we'll, that. We'll, yeah, we'll have you back. Um, I think it's a disaster, but we'll see. First of all, she cut that guy off a lot in that segment. Like, he's in the middle of making substantive points. Hey, anyway, whatever. Then, yeah, you roll the tape. So, uh, he, of course, is correct. Um, she's trying to pretend like, Oh, I thought legal marijuana was going to destroy the drug cartels. It turns out it's not destroying the drug cartels. And, uh, first of all, she's giving misleading evidence because we've covered stories on this show that demonstrate that indeed is what's happening. Now, there may be some contradictory evidence in that, uh, in some circumstances, they are adjusting and they, the drug cartels are trying to stay relevant by doing new tactics, like the tactic that she describes here. But overall, they have taken a big hit as a result of legalized marijuana in certain states in the U.S. But, furthermore, and this is the most important point here, growing it and providing it is still illegal at a federal level in the United States, Laura. So, 
That's why oftentimes the drug cartels fill that hole in the marketplace because people don't want to roll the dice and risk their life and risk their future. Law-abiding citizens don't want to roll the dice on uh, growing it and providing it because they might get nabbed by the federal government. So, in other words, she's taking the evidence that further proves that we need to legalize it at a federal level but pretending like that's evidence that we shouldn't have legalized it even at the state levels. Which is just misleading, and it's what a giant propagandist does. Now, uh, the point that the guy made who she's talking to, and he's right, but she kind of drowned it out, is, well, hold on now. If you were correct, if you were correct about this, then why are there no, you know alcohol cartels anymore? Why is the mafia not incredibly powerful anymore? I mean, they sold alcohol back during prohibition and then weird we got rid of prohibition and here we are so many years later and uh they're in tatters there's really not a black market for alcohol anymore now is there because everybody could just get it legally so that proves his case debate over if we legalize it at a federal level legalize tax and regulate it the drug cartels are donezo. They would need to come up with some new thing and you know a totally different drug that's not legal yet or whatever um and they would take a giant hit monetarily. So he's just right about that. But she, being a rank propagandist, is working backwards from her conclusion that marijuana's bad! And so she's, you know, cooking up some bogus evidence here and trying to put that on everybody. Uh, the... There is a positive angle to this story, though. Which is... The like to dislike on YouTube was unbelievable for this story. Even Fox News viewers, people who normally watch Fox News shit on YouTube, massively dislike this video because they see through her bullshit, man. And by the way, it, there also is just an argument here for freedom. Like, even if there are some societal ills that might come about from legalized marijuana, and all the evidence points to the fact that that wouldn't be the case, that you get rid of most of the societal ills, like violent crime, for example. But even if there are some societal ills that would come as a result of legalizing marijuana, well, there are a lot of societal ills that exist as a result of legalized alcohol. But we all don't want to ban it anymore because we understand there's something to the argument of, hey, freedom, man, freedom. So, but she never apply that argument with alcohol, with uh, marijuana, even though she pretends to be a small government conservative. Really, she's just a mindless traditionalist, brainwashed by the culture she grew up in, and she's working backwards from her conclusion. She sucks at her job.